Good afternoon and welcome to the CDH webinar from today. Our topic today is key to the German market, commercial agents, how producing companies from outside Germany can enter the German market. Um, we are pleased that uh, we are, were able to interest so many participants from all over Europe and we are looking forward to an interesting presentation. Uh, my name is Eckhard Döpfer. I'm a member of the executive board of the CDH. I will accompany you today as a moderator during our webinar. Now I'm happy to introduce uh, the speaker and expert of today, uh, Mr. Philip Kupke from our original organization in the north of Germany. He is director general of uh, this uh, uh, regional organization in the north of Germany and uh, an attorney of law with a specialization on commercial agent business law. So, now a short, in a short way, uh, some details to the CDH. The CDH is the leading German organization for commercial agents and distribution. You can see our slogan, competition for distribution. And uh, we are seated in, in Berlin and established in 1902. We have, uh, so we have a, a long history and we represent, representing the interest of uh, around about 48,000 commercial agents. And it's very important, it's the B2B area and not uh, to the B2, B2C, but the B2 consumer. And another uh, fact is that our members are commercial agents of all sectors. Um, it's for us uh, 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 very important and also uh, means great efforts to, to uh, be useful to all these sectors. And we have also, also an international collaboration with the International Organization of Commercial Agents organization all over Europe and of North America. We are member of the UCAP. So, um, here you can see the uh, 11 federal CDAs associations and their offices uh, all over Germany. The CDH, uh, where I'm working for, where I am working for, is the umbrella organization, and we are seated in, in Berlin. Um, a far, uh, short advice to this uh, webinar. Um, you, you see it on the screen. You have not to make any notes. Um, from ma next Monday, you will find uh, the presentation as a free download and um, leave us some time. Uh, at the end of the next week, you uh, can also download uh, as a free video this um, webinar. And now I want to um, show you um, a short um, video with the key facts of uh, the uh, of the benefits uh, working with commercial agents. CDH, the leading German organization for commercial agents and distribution, presents more successful sales with commercial agencies. This is Peter Brown. Peter is the head of a mechanical engineering company. He develops and produces special pumps. He is also selling the pumps himself. The economy is booming and more and more companies want to buy his pumps. Peter is totally overworked and can't do all by himself anymore. Too little time and ever more companies want to buy his products. What are his great pumps good for if sales can't handle the demand? Peter has to change something and urgently needs support to boost his sales. He looks for a solution to his problem on the website of CDH, the central organization for sales companies. There he finds information and access to a large pool of external commercial agents who can help him. A commercial agent could sell his pumps. He solely works on commission basis. Peter only needs to pay when revenue is generated. There are no fixed or social security costs for Peter as with an employee. Okay, but how can we find an experienced agent for his pumps? CDH helps Peter with his search for a suitable sales partner, for example through CDH's commercial agent portal. 
www.commercialagents.de or via their business magazine for agents and sales, the HMB Journal. Peter finds an experienced agent very quickly who knows his industry very well. And now the agent successfully sells pumps for Peter and also assists customers with technical installation and maintenance questions. Furthermore, he visits trade fairs, knows about the latest trends and acquires new customers for Peter's pumps right at the fair. Peter is really happy. His commercial agent is of great benefit. He also represents a company for gaskets which perfectly complements his pumps. Peter's customers are delighted. Now they get everything they need from one source. And Peter is delighted as well. His business is growing. Because his agent is totally focused on the market, Peter knows all about the latest needs and develops a new and even better pump with joy. Peter meets Tom, a dear business friend, and shares his experiences. Immediately Tom is excited. He also needs such an experienced sales professional. For a long time Tom has been trying to sell his products into new markets. Peter's recommendation, CBH. For more information on a cooperation with an extern sales specialist, go to www.cdh.de. Before I hand over to Philip Krupke, I want to say a few or, uh, organization notes. You can ask us questions during the whole webinar. On the right side of your screen, you see the the area for question and the questions are only seen by us, not by the participants. So you have, don't have any fear. You can ask all things you are interested. And um, so another point, if you leave the webinar, we, I don't hope that you do it before the end, <laughs> but uh, you, we make, make a short survey and we are very, very interested to uh, get some feedback from you. So my um, back to you, uh, when you leave it, uh, ask some uh, uh, questions and we are very happy. So yet uh, now I want to, want to um, pass over to Philip Krupke in Hamburg. Waiting to get a screen. So, so a warm welcome from me from Hamburg too. Thank you to Eckert in, in Berlin uh, for the introduction. Um, I want to start to give you a quick overview of uh, what a commercial agent does in Germany, uh, especially in Germany, because I will go into the EU too at the end. Uh, how you can find the agent will be the last point I'm, I'm uh, having. And um, so let's start by getting the uh, overview of what commercial agents do in Germany. Um, as Eckhart already said, there are approximately 48,000 commercial agents in the B2B um, area in Germany. Um, these are not single persons, these are companies. 48 company, uh, 48,000 companies. So approximately there are four to five persons per company working outside on the road uh, to to get business for the people they are working for. So uh, there, if you if you look at the heads, uh, there are quite a few more commercial agents than these 48,000 companies. Um, they generate a turnover in Germany of uh, 175 billion euros per year, uh, which is about 30% of the whole turnover of all goods um, in, in Germany. So commercial agents are quite important for business in Germany. They are well known there and I think uh, only Italy will be a country in, in, in Europe where commercial agents are a higher uh, offer. Um, that's to, to give you an idea that working with a commercial agent in Germany is nothing special, is no thing that is extraordinary, but is quite a normal thing to do. So uh, what do commercial agents uh, do and why are they attractive business partners 
in Germany? Well, of first, they are independent companies, so they are not your employees. Eckhart already told uh, you a bit about that. Um, they're intermediate new business to you, uh, but it's still your business. I will go on to that in, in more detail later on. Um, but you still have everything on hand in your own company, what you do with, the, with, the, uh, with your uh, customers, how you do the pricing, and such things you wouldn't have in your own hands if you would work with a distributor, for, uh, a distributor, for example. Um, they exist in nearly every branch. I uh, work for CDH about 12 years now, and I think there is no branch which I didn't have contact with through our members in the last 12 years, um, meaning quite a lot of them are uh, working for, for their, their uh, customers or bringing products to customers from the industrial sector, so people who need their things for their industry uh, really as last customers, but also on the retail sector. So uh, they also sell to distributors, they also sell to wholesalers, they also sell to uh, the small shops in the, in the high streets. Um, so that's all the clients, all uh, the customers, they sell your goods to. So there's uh, all these things are there in Germany. If we look at the whole EU, it's even uh, more there, of course, it's bigger than just Germany. Uh, we have 590,000 commercial agents which generate a turnover of about 260 billion, uh, which is only 3% of the commerce turnover. I, I told you that uh, in Germany it's 30%, so 10 times what it is in the European average. Um, and mostly they work for small and medium-sized companies uh, and sell their products. So um, that's the same in Germany too. There are big companies uh, which work with uh, commercial agents, but as in Germany, mostly small and medium-sized companies exist. Uh, this is also what uh, they mostly work for. Sorry, Philip, um, I have to sh interrupt you for a short time because there are many questions, and I say to all the participants, be a little patient and uh, here, uh, uh, here to the webinar, to the to the presentation of Philip, and then we go step by step, and at the end we will have a chat, and you can all, we look through the whole questions, and we will answer them. Be a little patient. Thank you. If there is a question, to a thing I'm just referring on, um, and which uh, I won't go on to in detail later, Eckhart will tell me. I don't see your questions at the moment, only Eckhart is seeing it, uh, but he will interrupt me if it's something on a point I just discussed and I won't go on to later. So as he said, be patient. Uh, most things, hopefully, we will take care of within the next three quarters of an hour um, and then we will come to this. Um, as I told you, in Germany, we're back in Germany now from the EU. Um, in Germany, uh, most sectors, I said even old sectors, uh, are worked on by commercial agents. But the foremost important, what you can see from, from this slide here, the foremost important are engineer, engineering. Um, and that's no wonder, really, because uh, to sell engineering products, you need engineers. Mostly, uh, these uh, products that are sold there are not uh, products produced on mass and then sold, but uh, products sold and, and produced individually. And therefore, you need an engineer to talk to the client, to uh, get uh, the experience what they need, to get all the data, to be able to see, I'm, am I able, are you able, to produce this thing and for which price. And that's where the engineering uh, commercial agent is intermediating there. Uh, the second big part is home and living accessoires. Um, that's because these are things, well, you sell not that much by using brains, 
but because the customer has heart to, uh, to feel for these things. And these are also things sold very much by commercial agents because you have to sell these with heart. And you can't um, just wait until uh, the order fax is coming into your fax machine, but you have to have people outside selling it with heart and telling the people how nice these products are and how much the end customers will love this product to buy it from your shop as you are the customer owning a shop selling such things. Um, and uh, therefore also that's the part where you have loads of commercial agents. Then you have fashion, sports and accessories as third important, uh, um, 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 uh, third important branch. Um, that's but about the same, but also, of course, the resellers uh, who want to sell these things want to feel it. They want to see uh, the samples and uh, feel how, how, they, how they feel. And uh, that's also a thing you have to do, do on the point of sale or in showrooms. And there you can use uh, commercial agents in a very good way. And the fourth, fourth important thing, construction, construction business, well, that's a bit the same as engineering. There you need some detailed information about the products to sell construction things, and these are also very important. And if you take these four branches together, you have nearly uh, three quarters of the whole of the whole market of commercial agents' activities. But the other quarter is over all branches, really. So, sorry, if um, I have to interrupt you another time for a short. Uh, this, uh, time because there are more and more participants uh, who are asking that uh, is not my category my products are not in this sectors don't worry that I'm the main sectors and for example uh, one participant a participant asked where are alarm systems uh, something like this that are at electronic products and uh, that's only the main sectors and Philip that's only for for you to have an overview okay Philip it's your for topic. example alarm systems we would have categorized under engineering uh, you, you would find alarm sectors uh, alarm uh, systems are sold by commercial agents I, I know at least two who are doing this here in the north of Germany uh, and uh, we would categorize them under, under the, um, engineering things because they are technical things. Um, uh, so this, in, in this example, you're even in it. Uh, but even if, if you don't have a head over there, there was a big part of mis miscellaneous. And as I told you, I think for most businesses, I would be able to tell you somebody who is doing it. So now to the... Uh, question, what is a commercial agent doing? Um, well, a commercial agent is your sales professional. It's your person in the market who is working for you on your products to bring them to the customers. And mostly, commercial agents are uh, experienced people um, who are in the market for quite a long time now. Um, uh, and uh, know their customers very well. And if you engage a commercial agent, you also engage him, or mostly probably you engage him, because he has the contact to the customers and is able to bring you into the customers because he is already in contact with the customers with other products he's selling too. So normally a commercial agent has a number of uh, companies he's working for, and bringing in all these products of all these people to his customers. Um, uh, so first start with a little repetition. Uh, they are independent entrepreneurs, no um, people engaged by you as uh, employees. They act at least the part we are talking for, they act on the B2B business to business area uh, in all sectors uh, and, and on behalf of you as company, um, but they also they own, not only act for manufacturers. In Germany, it's quite uh, common that wholesalers also work with commercial agents to get the things as wholesalers 
to the high street shops or to the uh, craftsmen who are buying there or whatever their customers, customers are. Um, the commercial agents arrange the sale of goods and uh, they conclude the transactions for you on your behalf. You have it on hand, I already said that. Um, the contract between your customer and you will be will be uh, concluded directly between your customer and yourself. Um, the commercial agent will only intermediate. He will not be a party of that sales contract. So you have it on your hand how you will have the pricing, how you will do delivery times, uh, how, how you do all these things you normally uh, want to have uh, on your own hands. Um, to engrid the commercial agent from other forms of distribution uh, will be the next thing I am looking to. First of all, uh, I will li like, to, uh, like to try to engrid it from a distributor, from a, from a wholesaler a distributor. Um, the distributor will buy the products from you to sell it further on to his customers. So therefore, you have the contract with the distributors. You also have the distribution contract, of course, but you also have the sales contract with the, country, uh, with the distributor. And it's his problem, mostly it's seen like this from, from people uh, having, having uh, been producers, having producing uh, industries. Um, it's his problem if he sells it or not. That's one part of the truth. The other one is um, that you don't have it on hand who are your customers? Uh, what are they really looking for? What do they need in the market? All this you probably won't get as information from the distributor or not as much as you would like and need it. Um, therefore, I think it's quite a good thing if the customer is your contractual partner. And that's what happens if you have a commercial agent. Um, the commercial agent is the person you have the commercial agency agreement with, of course, and who pro uh, places your product with the customer and who, who brings you an offer of the cu customer to, to buy your product. But the sales contract is directly between the customer and you, and the commercial agent is not engaged in that contract. You will get all feedback from the customer directly Perhaps over, uh, 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 yeah, over, over, over the commercial agent who is speaking with the customer, of course, but he will have to give it to you in his own interest because uh, then he, um, uh, he, he, uh, well, he, he is the person uh, of, the, of, of, of your company in the eyes of the customer. The customer will think, well, that's the man of your company um, and uh, that's the most important. Think, uh, I think to be to 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 engrid a distribution from uh, from a commercial agent. Later on, I will tell you a bit about the difference to traveling salesman, um, but that I will do later. Um, commercial agents, as I said, have numerous national and international business contacts, um, and uh, therefore they can help you to get into the market, to get into the German market. That's what we are talking about here because they already have the customers you need. They are only looking, the commercial agent you need is one who is looking for your products because he has uh, products which are interesting for the same clientele, for the same people, but are not the same products. Uh, as our film said, um, if he's already saying, uh, uh, selling uh, pumps, caskets will be a marvelous product for him to sell too. So if you have caskets, to be in that example of the film, uh, if you have caskets, probably he will uh, be looking for you to accomplish his uh, sales of pumps. And that's the ideal thing how a commercial agent should work and normally does work. So a commercial agent not only does your customer acquisition for you, but he also does uh, customer support. Uh, he is the one, the person who is dealing with the customer directly. 
Um, uh, he uh, is also, for example, if there are complaints, the person, the customer will go to, to, to have a complaint. And if it's a good salesman, of course, he will make new business out of that complaint. That's, that's the, the good thing you can do as a good salesman. Uh, a complaint must, uh, does not have to be bad, uh, but uh, might be a chance for, for a new turnover. Um, uh, he perhaps even is your distribution center, so therefore will have your products if they are smaller products uh, on hand uh, to send them directly. So even that, that is done by some commercial agents where it fits in from the product. Um, and of course he is your consultant because he is the one talking to the customers and therefore he will be able to tell you what is needed on the market, what further constructions on your products or further things on your products should be interesting and should be good for your company uh, to produce. That's the point where we want to yes. get you in a bit because uh, Eckhart has prepared a little survey he uh, will give to you. Yeah, thank you, Philip. I, I will start a survey. Uh, now your cooperation is uh, requested. Um, I will start it and you make your choice and uh, so we can the results I will uh, told to all and uh, to Philip, and um, he will uh, uh, begin in the two seconds. To, to, he will uh, um, continue his presentation. And so um, I ask to you, please make your choice. You see the question: which of the, which of the following fields you assess as most important for the distribution? You can uh, choose more than one. Uh, please make your choice. A few more, thank you. A few more, yes. Approximately 40% 40, 40 have made their choice. Thank you. A few more. I will stop it in a few seconds. Last chance. Okay, thank you. 70% have answered and here are the results. Philip, the most important it is the for the participant is marketing market monitoring, 63%. The second position, preparation of an offer, 52%. The third is product trainings for customers, 37%. And the uh, fourth and fifth are on the same level with 30% is attendance on trade fairs and compliant handling. Thank you for your participation on this survey. Yeah, thank you very much. That's quite interesting. Uh, what I have for you is a, a, a similar survey. Uh, the University of Cologne did some years ago. Um, so as a representative uh, survey they did uh, over uh, German companies working with commercial agents and they asked about the same question. And you see uh, market monitoring, which was the most important for you, is on uh, is, is third uh, with uh, uh, equal percentage. You had about 65%. Uh, you say, see here it is 65% too, I think it was 63 with you, but it's, it's in, in the same range. Um, marketing monitoring, as I said before, of course it's important for you, and that's what a commercial agent has to do for you. Um, he has to uh, uh, tell you everything you need to know from the market. Um, he also has to filter for you information that is not important. Um, therefore, you need somebody who is really, really into the business, who knows the business, and uh, that's why I said most commercial agents are uh, not just coming from school, but have experiences of years they uh, collected as being employees, uh, working for bigger companies who, who had their own sales department, and then when they are 40, 50 years of age, then normally they uh, do their, their own business and become uh, commercial agents. Um, the most important at that survey nationwide in Germany uh, was complaint handling. As I told you, uh, of course complaints are always a problem uh, if you have to handle with, that, with um, 
as as company, as producing company. But it's also a chance, and it's it's a it's a real uh, thing you can expect from a good salesperson that he will take a complaint. Uh, therefore, for about three companies that were asked here, complaint handling was the most important thing they would expect from a good commercial agent and from their commercial agent. The second, the second one you also had in your, your uh, premium sector uh, was preparation of an offer. Um, I have to bring a bit clear or make a bit clear what, what uh, was meant by this. Um, of course, the commercial agent has to bring offers. That's his main job. That's not what we meant here, or what the University of Cologne meant here. Um, uh, the, the thing is um, that uh, if you are in the engineering sector, sometimes uh, to prepare the offer means to hear at the customer's place what they need and then make an offer out of it because of uh, the, the, the things the customer needs for a special production for this customer. If you're, for example, that's I think a thing everybody could imagine. If you are selling things to the car industry, uh, the commercial agent will have to work with the car industry to find out uh, what materials and what machines would be needed for the new car they are producing, and then uh, to to make an offer for exactly the thing needed and um, that can be produced from your company as the the company they are working for. So preparation of an offer, as I meant here, is much more than just to collect offers and bring them to you. Um, that's what they, they meant here. Marketing monitoring, we already talked about. Very important uh, product training. If the products are not uh, uh, too easy to understand, of course, you have to train uh, the, 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 the people buying it. Uh, this might be in, it might be industry that is selling uh, buying it, or this might be retailers who are selling it. Then you have to uh, to train their sales personnel that they can sell it well. And this is also a thing uh, quite a lot recommended by uh, from uh, commercial agents. And this this is the thing they really do. And uh, a last thing I would like to em emphasize is um, showing samples on trade fairs. That's also a thing they do. Um, they do re regional trade fairs uh, where these exist and branches where they exist. They do regional trade fairs with their own little stand uh, where they will show all the products they have. So you will participate at a, at a small booth at such a fair, a regional fair, um, with your products without having a stand on yourself. That's the thing they can do. The other thing is, if you have larger, uh, larger fairs where you have your own stand and where customers from the area the, customer, the commercial agent is working in are uh, coming to, then of course the commercial agent might also support you at that stand to be there for the customers from his region. Um, to summarize all this, um, uh, we have to say commercial agents have uh, up-to-date market knowledge, that's what you buy really. Um, they work professionally, of course they do, because they live on the things they sell. Normally they get a commission, and if they, you get a commission for everything you sell, of course you're interested to sell as much as possible, as much as the market will take, because they are also interested that the customers are are uh, um, happy with the things sold to them, because they want to sell uh, to them other products in the future too your product and other products. So therefore, they should have a good hand on how much and how they are selling products. Um, so that they are able to, sell, so that the customers are able to sell them on. Um, they have a long-standing customer relationship. That's why you engage them, as I said. They are sales specialists, of course. Uh, their uh, remuneration, their payment, is based on uh, the turnover they generate for your company. Uh, so therefore, there are no fixed fees normally. There might be exceptions, but normally there are no fixed fees. Um, uh, so therefore, you are able to have flat structures in your company. You don't need your own sales personnel. Um, and they are strategic, strategic partners for you uh, to go on. 
And that's the point where we have a second and last short survey to bring you into the seminar, please, Eckhart. Yes, thank you, Philip. Now your cooperation is uh, respected a second time. I will start uh, the uh, survey, the sort, uh, um, you see it. We want to know from you which aspects in the main reason is the main reason when you select a distribution channel. Here is only one decision possible. Please take, make your choice. There's a few more. Yes, thank you for your choice. I will close the survey in two seconds. Thank you. And you see the result. The, the, the winner is <laughs> expert and market knowledge. 70% and uh, the second winner is business strategic thinking while doing market monitoring and the two other things have 0%. So very interesting. Okay. Thank you for your participation. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, that's quite interesting, really. But uh, um, I think the, the the winner, as Eckert said, uh, that's well, what I just said. Of course, that's why you hire sales personnel in in in, in which form you might hire it. Um, but uh, perhaps we have a little look now uh, on uh, distinguishing the commercial agent from a sales employee. We already distinguished it uh, from a distributor, from a wholesaler. Um, but uh, what's the differences to a sales employee? Um, if you engage a commercial agent, it's your extended arm, of course. That's with, with an uh, employee too. But you have no fixed costs. You only have costs if there is turnover. You have a percentage to the turnover you have to pay to your commercial agent. And therefore, you can calculate his remuneration uh, into your calculation of your price. That's more difficult if you have an employee, because you don't know how much you are selling. But you have this fixed salary. And therefore, it's very difficult to find the right percentage within your cal calculation of the price of your product for the salesman. Uh, that's quite easy working with a commercial agent because he gets a fixed percentage. Um, you can increase your social turnover. Uh, hopefully, you do that with a commercial, uh, with, a, with an employee too. Um, but uh, the thing is that, that, of course, being paid on a, a basis of turnover, he will be very, very much uh, interested in doing the best possible turnover for your company. And if you have an employee paid with a fixed rate, perhaps that's not quite the same. Um, it frees capacities in your company because you don't have to uh, have your own employee you have to look at. But he is working on himself. The commercial agent is working on himself. Is uh, And that was also important uh, when you made the little survey a second ago. Um, um, he is a businessman by himself. He is organizing himself. He has his own interest to do your best thing because it's his best thing. And that might be different with the employee. Um, he should know the customers that good that he is there when he is needed. Um, that might also be if you, if you, for example, sell textile. Uh, textiles are sold in spring and in autumn. And the rest of the year, there's not too much to do, really. Um, if you have a salesperson employed in your company, the question is what is he or she is doing all the rest of the year, uh, the other half of the year. Um, uh, with a commercial agent, that's his problem, not yours. And normally, they really use it uh, to, to uh, uh, say accessoires, for example, or uh, do reorders of things that are sold good or things like that. Um, he provides you with new customers, of course, 
uh, and he keeps a close eye on the market for you. That was also very important for you, and of course, that's a very important thing. But as I said, no fixed costs for you, no social costs for you. Um, you have a little training at the beginning, of course, if the product you're selling is you for the commercial agent, you will have to train him in the beginning, but later on, normally training should be the problem of the, of the commercial agent, and in his own interest, he will train himself because he needs that to sell it. Um, the travel expenses, you might uh, come to a point where uh, the commercial agent and you agree on uh, splitting travel expenses or you might even pay travel expenses, but normally if you don't agree on such things, uh, are uh, his things, and especially uh, travel expenses, every day's travel expenses uh, are of course uh, paid by the commission, the commercial agents that gets no extra co costs. The commission is everything he gets there, and I think that's a good point, really, especially if you go new into a market, that's a point uh, that might be important for you because it easens it to you to find a good price. Um, the bottom line really is working with a commercial agent provides you an extremely flexible business model for your sales activities. You are very flexible and that's the thing uh, I think you, that might be the, the most important thing um, if you com compare it to the sales employee, because of course you can also engage a person who is already in the market. Um, uh, you can engage somebody who was a commercial agent up to now. Of course you might, that if you pay him enough salary, you will get one, of course. But then you have employed him and uh, you, you, you're, you're stuck to him really. And with a commercial agent, you can uh, find out if it works good. If it works good, you will, you will work together for years and years and years. Most of the contracts really uh, last for quite a, a few years. I think the average is about 10 years. Um, but if it doesn't work out, you're very flexible to change the system. Sorry. So that's what I want to... Sorry, Philip, I have to interrupt you another time because one participant asked a question that is interesting also for the other participants. Uh, the participant asked, how can we make sure that the commercial ASIN does not work for different companies with products which are in competition to my products? Okay, um, thank you for that question. Uh, of course, that's important too. Um, uh, by law, at least in Germany, by German law, um, it is forbidden to uh, represent uh, companies who are in competition, to represent com competi competing um, companies. So uh, from law, it really should be so that the commercial agent has quite a few companies he is representing. That's why the customers love him, because it's only one person they have to speak to um, uh, to get a number of products and they don't have a different person to talk to for every product. So that's, I think, uh, even a positive point uh, from the view from the customer in any case. Um, but uh, normally they are not, or, well, they are not allowed, not only normally, they are not allowed by law to have competitive products within their product range. So what they normally do, the, uh, the commercial agents, is if they have a, a, a hole between the different products, uh, normally they close that hole to have, to have the good range uh, by buying or selling products, by, uh, by acting as a, as a, as a uh, distributor then again, a wholesaler, um, so that they are sure that they don't have competing products. But that's, a, that's how the German law says the thing, it sees the things. But uh, if you have very good agents, which are especially good in the market and which are uh, wanted by a number of companies. I know quite a few companies really um, that are so keen on working with that agent that they allow him uh, to work with competitive companies too. And I know big uh, commercial agent companies um, who have uh, loads of, 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 uh, of, of people or companies they are working for, and they are also competitive. But then 
these competitive companies have to allow the agent to do that. And that happens if the commercial agent is good enough, if they trust into him, uh, or trust him, uh, that uh, he will be able to work with competitive products and to sell all the products where it fits in. Um, but then, of course, you have to know the agent quite well. The agent has to be known to the market, and then people might allow that. But by law, that's forbidden. Thank you for the question. Um, I want to say something about the legal conditions now. As Eckhart said, I'm a lawyer, so probably I'm expected to do so, and that's what I like. Um, uh, I, I tell you something about the legal commissions, uh, the conditions of commercial agents law in Germany, but also in the EU. Um, first of all, of course, a commercial agent's contract has to serve both parties uh, to get legal security for both parties. Um, that's the bottom line, really, uh, what a commercial agent's contract should be good for. But also, if you don't have things uh, ruled in your commercial agent's contract, there are, of course, rules by law. In Germany, they are uh, in, in a part of the HBD, uh, HGB, uh, that's the Handelsgesetzbuch, which, which means commercial law, really. Um, and uh, there you have rules. But most of these rules are uh, concessionary, are not obligatory, are not Sorry, I, I lose my English here. I'm not obligatory. So, um, uh, so you're free to agree on different things than there are in the law. Some are obligatory. Some laws uh, are not to be changed, but these, some are not many. Um, I emphasize this because many people think there would be a European uh, commercial agents law. That's only half true. Uh, there is a common uniform uh, directive, or there is a directive, um, which gives the national laws uh, some base which they have to f fulfill. So the, the, the European commercial agents law un, laws are not too different. But the, the um, holes in that directive can be filled by, uh, the, um, by the national law in different ways, and that's what happens on the on the side parts. But the main parts are, are um, at least equal to each other in the whole of Europe. Um, but still, it's important which law you look at, and I will have some examples in a, in a second for you uh, how they are different. Um, but as I saw, just told you, the main parts are at least equal. Um, so what has to be in a commercial agent's contract? Um, you have to regulate the rights and duties there, of course, of both parties. Um, as I told you, you have a freedom of contract and are normally free, and most parts are free to, to uh, contract on whatever you want. Uh, at least in Germany, in some countries, countries it's different, but at least in Germany, you don't need a written form of a contract. But I think it is good to have a written contract, even if it's a very short contract, to just bring in uh, things that perhaps might need proof and which are not in the law. For example, how high the commission is the commercial agents get, how much or how high the percentage is he, he will get, uh, obviously can't be uh, ruled by law. Um, because it's different for everybody, uh, and therefore such thing you would have to write into a contract. I will go into that later. Um, the thing is, if you go to our website, cdh.de, uh, cdh sorry, um, you will find a number of uh, also bilingual contracts uh, that you can download there uh, to have example how a commercial agent's contract could look like. Um, duties of the commercial agent I already told you about. Uh, this is uh, really some repetition there, but I think these things also might go into the contract. That's why I have it here again. And uh, concerning German law and most European laws, really, um, it is here. Uh, your commercial agent has to restrain from competition. Um, uh, he has to fulfill appropriate instructions, so instructions that are uh, useful 
uh, not if you give him instructions uh, that um, have nothing to do with the sale of the products, then it, he is free because he is not your employee to do whatever he wants, but everything that has to do with the sale of the products, uh, he you may, might, be, uh, might be able, you are able, and you might want to give instructions there. Um, uh, he uh, has um, to hand over all documents that of, are of importance to you. Uh, shortly said, he has the obligation to inform you, um, which of course is important as we saw from the survey. Um, your company, uh, your duties, essential duties, uh, you have to give him sales material, uh, he, all the material he needs to sell your product. Of course, no PC, no, no, no computer or something like that. That's what he has himself. But if you have samples, for example, or if you have catalogs, such things you will give, have to give him. Also, you have an obligation to inform the commercial agent if, for example, you are not able to perform, if you are, uh, have some products uh, producing difficulties, then of course you have to tell him, well, don't sell at the moment, please. Um, and of course, you have to pay the commission. Um, uh, important thing to emphasize here um, should be or is um, that you have no obligation in general to uh, accept a contract or accept the offer the commercial agent brings to you. As I said before, you're the party to the sales contract with the customer. And therefore, you might also say no. Uh, this contract, for whatever reason, I don't want to conclude. But, and that's why I bring it in at this point, then you have to inform the commercial agent as early as possible which are the criteria uh, you will put on uh, if you have to decide if you want to conclude the contract or not, so that he is able only to bring you offers that you also would like to conclude. That's a very um, important thing. Now, let's look some, at some national rules. Uh, as I said, you in Germany, a contract doesn't have to be in writing, but here you see a few countries, a few European countries, where it's different, where a commercial agent's uh, contract has to be in writing. Uh, so, what has to be into the, in, in the contract? Of course, the contracting parties, that's, I mean, <laughs> easy to say. I also say you should have a territory in it uh, where the agent should work in and for which he is responsible. Of course, you have to say which kind of products he has to sell, which are your products he has to sell. Uh, of course, you will have in the contract when it starts. And if you want a contract for, um, uh, for, for a fixed term, of course, also the end of the contract. But mostly, or most common, contracts are not for fixed terms, but they just start and run on until they are uh, and until uh, they they, um, uh, they they are they ended by notice and then of course you have to uh, have to uh, terminate it by notice sorry uh, and then of course you have to find a notice period and also the notice periods are a bit different in the different countries in Germany it starts with a very uh, very little. Uh, notice period. In the first year, it's only one one month of notice period. In the second year, two months. In the third, fourth, and fifth year, three months. And only from the sixth year of company, of your account contract with the salesperson on, it will be six months. Um, and I also always say that this is the part you should bring into your contract right? because I think it's also in your interest that you have some security there and that you have notice periods of at least three months. So therefore, I would I would go in there and would say, okay, the uh, the minimum uh, notice periods by German law are in the first years are too short for me, and I would prolong only that you have some security that you can plan on on it. Um, and uh, I think that's a good thing you should put into your contract. Then, of course, you have to put in the remuneration, how much you pay the commercial agent. Uh, of course, that has to be brought in. And I also would uh, say it would be a good idea to bring in that a uh, notice, a termination notice, has to be in writing, only that you have the possibility to see, okay, 
was there a notice or was there no notice? If you only have an oral notice, termination notice, um, sometimes that's a problem. Um, so let's go on to, to uh, some uh, countries. As I told you, uh, especially in, 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 in many countries, uh, one of which is Germany, you have a uh, minimum notice uh, period of up to six months. I told you it starts with one, one month, but after six years, uh, after five years really, in this up, uh, from the sixth year on, you have six months. Uh, that's different in different countries. So uh, you also have smaller uh, periods in other countries, as you can see here. Um, then the, another question always asked is, um, if I have to pay uh, at the end of the of the contract of commercial agents, do I have to pay anything then to the commercial agent? I, I will tell you uh, when you have to pay something after German or, or looking at German law, when you have to pay something uh, to the commercial ag agent and when not. But there are two different principles in the EU. There is an indemnity principle, which is in most of the countries. and um, uh, you have a compensation model, which uh, is the old French model, and therefore, of course, it's still law in France and in Belgium, uh, by the way. And uh, you have a choice if you take indemnity or compensation in Great Britain and in Ireland. But all other countries, apart from Great Britain and Ireland, which have the, the choice, uh, France and Belgium have chosen the old German system of indemnity, which I will tell you in a second what it's about. Uh, so therefore you might already see that perhaps it's not the worst system you could have because otherwise probably the other countries who are free to choose if they want to have a compensation model or a indemnity model would have chosen something else, would have chosen the compensation model. So what is the indemnity uh, after or at com contract combination all about? Um, the, the, the idea is that the commercial agent brought new customers to you. And uh, the question is, why did he do that? Of course, he did do that because uh, he, he thinks and hopes that bringing you a new customer, he will get commission from his future turnover for a long time. Because just working on a not existing customer to get him to become a customer, of course, is a lot of, of work. And the commercial agent doesn't get any payment for that because he only gets paid if there is turnover. And at that stage, he doesn't know if there ever will be turnover and how much. So therefore, if he brings you a new customer, and then the contract, the commercial agent's contract, is ended without any faulty thing of the commercial agent, meaning without the commercial agent being the one uh, terminating the contract, without the commercial agent being a person giving an extraordinary reason for an extraordinary uh, termination of the contract by you, by the company, um, then he will get this compensation because you as company are still able in the future to work with the, comp with the, with the customers he brought as new customers for you. And uh, he, the commercial agent, won't get any more commission for the future business you are doing there. So uh, th therefore, you not only have to pay the, uh, the, the, the um, uh, indemnity only if you terminate the contract with the commercial agent without reason, um, but also it is uh, that you uh, only have to pay if he brought you new customers. If the commercial agent didn't bring you any new customers, you won't have to pay a penny cent or whatever, <laughs> uh, most countries in Europe at least is cent. Um, um, and uh, therefore I think the indemnity shouldn't be the main problem. Uh, it's always, as I know as a lawyer, is the, the point where you talk about the most if you, if you engage a commercial agent. But if you look at it in detail, as you only have to pay it, if you have um, a, a significant benefit from what the agent did for you, after the end of the commercial agent's contract, I think it's a it's a, a payment that that's worth it, and uh, therefore this shouldn't be a reason not to work with a commercial agent. Uh, 
but because, as I so told you, uh, you only have to pay it if, if you uh, have, can work on with the customers. So what does a commercial agent cost you? Of course, it costs money. Uh, you have to pay him commission for everything, every uh, turnover he brings in for you. Uh, as I told you, you also have to uh, pay him some indemnity or compensation after the end of the contract. But also, furthermore, of course, it costs some time, mostly before the beginning of the contract, to find a commercial agent. That's what I will talk to in a second, uh, the last five minutes. <coughs> Sorry. Um, um, and um, also on the first training on products, uh, if he, the commercial agent is trained once, then you don't have any more work with that. Sorry, so how do you find a commercial agent? I interrupt agent? you. Uh, yeah? Perhaps to another time, because there are many questions on the agenda here for me before me on the screen, and some uh, one question was uh, from a, particip a particip uh, participant: um, if there are any standard commission for the commercial agent, how we can how we say it? It's uh, the two are uh, two uh, uh, um, self-employed. Uh, uh, persons, the manufacturer and the commercial agent, and they have to to look what is the, the right condition for this uh, the product, for this uh, duties uh, uh, which the commercial agents ha have to do for the manufacturers. Philip, what, yeah. what can so, you say so, uh, on that on? In, in, in short, no. Uh, uh, of course, there are, uh, there are commissions which uh, are ranges of con commission uh, in every branch, um, which are more or yes, more or less normal. Um, but for example, the best earning commercial agent I know, who earns really a million a year, um, is about only 0.5% commission. Uh, so little, little, very little commission, but he has only products who have huge turnover, as you can imagine, if he if he does a million with that, uh, only getting half a percent of commission. And I also know other um, uh, commercial agents, uh, especially if you talk about software, computer business software, where you have a commission up to 50 percent. Um, and uh, you, you still need, an, as Eckhart Dörpfer said, the thing is really that uh, you, you should discuss this with the commercial agent because then you can see what, what, how he is calculating his commission. He will tell you what turnover he expects. Okay, and I need a commission of, let's say, 8%. Um, and from the turnover, I expect 8% would be that amount. And this amount I need because I have to do that and that and that for you. And therefore, I think this payment is adequate. Um, so to, to look at it really, um, to, to find it out with every commercial agent on himself, um, is also a good thing to you uh, to see what chances the commercial agent gives your product on the market. Um, so that's the first point. The second, to bring it a little in, most commissions are between 5 and 15 percent, and the heart will be between, I think, 8 and 12 percent. Most is between around about 10. But as I said, it, it, it depends very much on the branch you're working in, your product is in. Uh, normally, for example, uh, more technical products will be higher than things uh, that uh, have little margin. Uh, food, for example, if you sell food, normally you are rather 5 to 8 than 10 to 12, but um, that also depends how much the product will be able to be sold in the market. So my last point already on the chart, uh, and we are through with okay, our time, we have, but that's we have my some last more point. questions, but uh, we, we make a, a little chat uh, after the presentation, and so we, yeah. we come back, we will come back to the the questions we are we are uh, we are leave uh, out at this moment. So okay. So I do the last chart uh, to, to another two minutes or so, and afterwards we ask, uh, answer the question. Uh, I guess answer, uh, answer
answer the questions. So what can you do to find a commercial agent in Germany? There are mainly four ways to find a commercial agent. One is uh, there is a journal of our uh, association where you uh, can uh, place an ad uh, and this journal is sent to all our members and uh, therefore you might have a good chance to find somebody. The main thing about this journal thing is that there you are free to describe your product very detailed. Uh, that's the main thing why this might be a good way. Uh, my favorite really is uh, the online job market at uh, Come Into Contact. That's the uh, European-wide uh, platform where you can find for many European countries uh, commercial agents, not only for Germany, or commercialagents.de uh, where you can find uh, commercial agents in Germany. Um, that's a bit cheaper. You also can do, do, the, do the two things together, the agent we journal of, of our, of our uh, association and uh, these uh, commercial agents.de, there are uh, combined um, offers to, to do both. Um, the thing about commercial agents.de is uh, that uh, all our members are registered there and you will have some, uh, uh, some, some makeup there. Uh, you will say for which branch, for which uh, geographical uh, area, um, and uh, for which customers, so resellers or industry, or so you're looking for you're looking for agents, and our agents also will say, uh, well, I'm working with customers from the industry sector. Um, I'm working in northern Germany, and I'm interested. Or I'm looking for somebody who wants to sell pumps because I already have caskets, and therefore I'm looking for pumps. And um, uh, then there will be a matching between your uh, your ad and the things they are looking for, and they will get an email. Um, so on plus to uh, your ad being in the internet and uh, on the largest platform that is there in the world uh, to find commercial agents, um, you also have the, the email notification of people who are looking for of, of commercial agents who are looking for your ad really, who are really interested in exactly your, uh, your, your, your product. And of course, you can also go to our local federal associations if you only look for uh, commercial agents in a special region, or you can go to fairs and exhibitions, and uh, if you uh, have a stand or booth in a fair, uh, you might hang up a little sign, and mostly if you are in a German fair, um, uh, there are commercial agents going around and looking for interesting products. Uh, and if they see you're looking for commercial agents, they probably will contact you understand. Um, if you if you get the, the, the presentation uh, on Monday, if you, if you download the presentation, you will find some more details about how the HNV journal works and also some more DJ details about commercialagents.de, uh, the platform, and uh, as I said, you, the push mail service for our members, where you can see how it works, a little bit more detailed. And that's all I want to say so that we have a little more time, we are seven minutes over time, that we have a little more time for some questions. And I say thank you for your, at this point I also answer the questions now that, that have come in, but not without uh, telling you that you find some addresses here which you can get in contact with. Um, if you uh, want to have some more information about this online platform, uh, commercialagents.de or comeintocontract.com, uh, please contact my colleague Villa, Aline Villa, um, who will be of help there with you uh, for you. And if you have uh, questions concerning legal questions, uh, you might con uh, contact my colleague Mrs. Wagner. You might also contact me, but uh, uh, please send the email to Mrs. Wagner, and if you have a special question to me, you might just write us to her, to my colleague Wagner, then she will pass it on to me. Thank you very much, and now I'm interested in your questions, and Dr. Fell will read out. Thank you, Philip Krupke, for this fantastic presentation, and we will come back to the questions who are leaving here. Um, uh, some, uh, some interesting questions for me also is, the idea from 
one participant, a participant, um, he asked, do we have to pay indemnity to the, to the commercial agent if the contract with him was written with start and end date? Um, yes. Um, if, if he brought new customers to you, um, then you will have to, to, to pay indemnity to him. Um, the thing is, uh, the, you have always, in general, you always have to pay indemnity to a commercial agent who brought new customers for you, which you will be able to use in the future if the contract ends. So the general rule is it doesn't depend on how the contract ends. But of course there are exceptions, as I said. So if the contract ended because the commercial agent uh, was the one who was um, uh, who was terminating uh, the, the 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 commercial agent's contract without having a reason, without you having not paid him his commission or something, but just because he doesn't want to work anymore, then he it's his own fault and therefore he won't get any indemnity. Vice versa. If you are able to, or if you have to, well, not able, if you have to uh, really uh, the, 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 uh, terminate the contract because the commercial agent doesn't respect the contract, he doesn't work anymore, which I never really saw, but because as I said, they, they have their living from that. They only live or they only earn money if they sell products for you. But the point you find in the books is if he doesn't work, or this other thing we had, if he is uh, also working uh, for competing companies without you having allowed that, um, then you might be able, or you are able, uh, to terminate uh, the contract for him, and then also the indemnity will fall away. He won't have uh, any right for indemnity. But uh, that's the, the main reason. There's a third one, but that's not, not of importance really. It's if he, if he sells his, his company, um, uh, if the commercial agent sells his company and the new owner does work on for you um, or something like that, then he also won't get a, 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 and he also won't get an indemnity. But that's normally not very important. Um, these are the only reasons why you, he won't get an indemnity if he brought new customers for you, which you can use in the future. So if you don't use the customers in the future because, for example, you're giving up your business, you're closing down, then also, and that's a hard case for the commercial agent because that's not his fault, but um, uh, then he won't get any indemnity either because uh, you won't, don't have any profit from the Commercial, from the customers, the commercial agent brought as new customers to use. You, you don't use the customers in the future, and therefore you don't have to pay either. Another question uh, is uh, from one participant. Can I hire two agents for the same product the same time? Um, yes, you can. Another question if, 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 if that's uh, a good idea. Um, but uh, it's not forbidden, uh, of course, which is no problem of all, uh, at all and which is, which is quite normal, is that you have different uh, agents for different areas. So one for North Germany, for example, one for the West, one for the East, one for the South. Um, most, in most uh, branches you will have four or five agencies in Germany uh, or one big who is doing the, the whole of Germany. Um, uh, but, but therefore, it's quite normal that you hire different uh, commercial agents, but for their own area where they are on, it, on their own. It is but, also possible. Uh, but but, but I possible. think it's not very uh, um, uh, it's not very good to to make such decisions because it will be a battle for the big custom or for the, or, uh, exactly. Yes, that, that, that's what, that's what, I, what, I, what I meant uh, if, I, if I said or when I said uh, that uh, it, I, I question if it's a good idea. Hmm. But, but, you, you, but you're, you're able to put 15 commercial agents uh, in one and the same uh, area. But as, as Eka just said, um, what do you think, how enthusiastic they will work for you if they have the experience that every second customer they look at tells them, well, your colleague was there yesterday. Um, 
So probably who will accept that. Probably uh, you only will get good agents if you give them an area for them themselves, for, for, for them. Um, but uh, it's not forbidden by law, but I think uh, to, to get a good agent, and to get an agent who really works on the area and goes to all the customers in the area and um, uh, knows, well, I have to work on the whole area because there's nobody else doing it, will be better for your company than having five or even only two doing uh, battling themselves and probably not putting the whole effort into them, into the market. Sorry, yeah, I, I think that's, what, that's what you wanted to say. Some misunderstandings um, because uh, one participant uh, asked before a few minutes uh, how, how many or how long do I have to pay indemnity after the end of the contract. Uh, so I say okay. it, it's one time and uh, there are many questions in the direction how much or how I, I have to calcul calculate the, the indemnity and I think Philip Kruppus said it a few uh, minutes ago, the, the, the uh, biggest sum is one uh, year provision, but it's the, the highest uh, sum that may be uh, possible, but it, it's a, a little bit difficult, the calculation of the indemnity, and so it's not possible to, or Philip, will you say few two or three sentences, but... Of course, of course I do. Um, as, I, as I said, it's um, depending on how many customers, new customers, the commercial agent brought to you. So if he brought no customers at all, you pay any indemnity. If he only brought a few customers, um, uh, you, you will uh, only have to pay very little indemnity. Um, there is a... a and as Eckert said, the calculation, the exact calculation, how the German uh, courts do it, um, is it's quite difficult. But as a as a general rule, which you don't find in a in a in a in a, in a law book, but as a general rule, you can say it's about double of what a commercial or what a commercial agent earns with the the new customers he brought for your companies in the last year. So if he brought 10% of the turnover and therefore 10% of his commission, new customers, then probably you will have to pay about 20% of a year commission to him. That's, it might be less, it might be more, but that's in most, most cases that's about right. Um, and. Uh, the maximum you have to pay is a year's commission. So uh, if you have half customers, new customers, um, uh, then you will have to pay a year's commission after what I said before, um, and that's the maximum you can pay. So even if you got 100% of new customers, you will never have to pay more than a year's commission. So that sounds much, that sounds like paying him for a whole further year, but you can use the customers endless, not just one year. And if you think about that, um, that might bring you to the idea that the, that the people had when they made this law and that uh, the most of the government said when they said, okay, from the EU directive, we rather take the German system into our, in our uh, commercial code than the French system. Um, it's really fair if you say, okay, I only have to pay maximum one year's commission uh, for using the people a lifelong time. I can't. Yes. Um, there are some questions over the CDH. The CDH is a private organization. We didn't uh, 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 get any money from the state or something like this. The, uh, the money for we need for our work comes from the members and nothing uh, other, nothing um, from the state. And another question that are leaving, I look on it, um, are some questions, how many uh, commercial agents I uh, uh, 
can uh, how many is there any restriction uh, um, in the direction of the maximum of commercial agent contracts no there are no no um, um, restrictions but it, it have to make sense because if you have 100 commercial agents over Germany is not uh, very uh, useful and uh, also the regional uh, parts of Germany and the number of customers in this territory uh, have uh, is, is, is very uh, important for your decision if uh, you have one two three four five commercial agents uh, all over Germany and the territory have to be separated it's also the uh, the information from uh, Philip Krupke. So I look on it. We have to look on the on the uh, on the clock. Um, I think we get it. Uh, okay. I, I I think we have we have uh, answered uh, all the questions we are uh, which was uh, uh, leaving out in the past. So I have to say very very. Uh, um, 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 thank you to um, Philip Kupke for this uh, presentation and also to all participants of this webinar. And one, um, I have to um, um, ask for your support. Um, it, it was very great if you answer the survey, uh, if you leave the webinar now. And yeah, thank you to all. Have a nice weekend. And I hope we see you in the future, perhaps. And so thank you for listening. Thank you.